Hello everyone, Chef here, welcome to a new video in the series of Fortnite Season Reviews. If you didn't know, this series was called Unscripted Fortnite Reviews, then we're going to change that to Fortnite End of Season Reviews. I started this series back last season, where I talked about the season and predicted what would be next. I also did one of these in Chapter 2, on Chapter 2 Season 2, but mainly that was because it was a 2 year anniversary of that season. Anyway, uh, just, let's just get started. So, to start off, let's talk about the event, because I didn't talk about the event last time, because I did the video before the event happened. The live event, in my opinion, is the best live event, and my favourite, because of the event itself, it felt really badass, when we were mowing down hordes of cube monsters at the start, and the cube queen opened the portal to show the rest of the last reality, the amount of ships there in the cube's cradle, that was a sire to behold. Alongside this, we had some of the most memorable cutscenes in the game, such as the scientists speaking and us killing zombies and stuff. Foundation officially being revealed as the rock. Flip over the island. Sadly, I did spoil myself a bit because uh, I actually watched a leaked trailer. So I got leaked out on TikTok and was posted everywhere, like on YouTube and stuff. But it was still amazing to see. Oh yeah, and on the day of the event, I believe a chapter 3 trailer was posted by the Polish Fortnite account on YouTube. And fun fact, originally, like the black hole, was laying down on that log would have taken two around two to three days, but because of that leak, they only had downtime for that season to be around 12 hours or so. During this 12 hours, I was floating on a plank of wood. Something interesting happened. Fortnite did something called hashtag Fortnite Flipped, where people would have to write a tweet on Twitter saying just that to reveal more of the map on the website. And checking that map was still cool even if I saw the leaked trailer previously, because I still didn't know half the locations that were in the game, still alongside the placement of the locations, and where, yeah, like, where they would be on the map and stuff. First day of the season, well, downtime wasn't over if I remember until around afternoon, and when I went on, well, the servers were completely because this season was the biggest season launch in the history of the game, so yeah, it makes sense why it was like that, but I um, managed to buy the battle pass, play a game, and then I landed shifty shafts, and uh, then I came off and waited until the next day so I could properly play on the new map with some friends. Well, the map has surprisingly changed a lot, so I'll talk about the map and the locations as I go along. So let's get started with the map at the start of the season. The map at the start of the season is still is amazing. It has an amazing variety of new locations and old locations returning. The variety of jungle, grassland, desert and a snow biome completely through Chapter 2's map, Owl Park. I loved how the snow covered pretty much all of the map. At the start, admittedly though, the map being covered in snow was slightly annoying because of the white circle to show where the next zone will be and the white arrow that signifies you on the mini map. However, these things were only minor so I can look past this. Now for the actual locations themselves, I'll start at the top left of the map and work my way down. This place was a place so like steamy stacks in chapter 2 where I thought I'd go over there as my main drop spot but I didn't and only landed there infrequently. Mainly because of the chests are scattered everywhere and you have to have a good look to find them sometimes. Apart from that I rate it 6 out of 10. Camp Cuddle to me is a pretty nice looking location. It's sort of like weeping wood but in the mountain. However I didn't land here a lot apart from the odd challenge because it was kind of pain to get out of there if the zone wasn't there. 4 out of 10. Greasy Grove has to be the second place I landed the most this season. I've always loved through locations and dropped Greasy in Season X pretty frequently, so it was a welcome addition to the new map. Also, all the buildings, etc. have just been fully decked out and look amazing. Also, another thing I find funny is that the house is boarded up. has a basement with a bunch of Thurberger posters from the Thurberger restaurant, presumably hinting Gracko took over the restaurant from Beef Boss, and he's living in there now. 8 out of 10. Shifty Shafts was one of my main and favourite locations in Chapter 1, and again I was really happy when it was revealed Shifty was coming back. Another thing I really liked was the fact that it was not just Shifty there, but an entire mountain that was hollowed out from mining in front of Shifty. Things like this make an already good location 10 times better, although I wish I landed there more this season, 8 out of 10. Sleepy Sounds definitely has a weird name, but it has to be the location I landed the most this season. To me this location was a fusion between Craggy Cliffs and Retail Row, which were both my main drops in Chapter 2, and I just like this location, and the houses at the front of it make it even cooler. However, I mostly drop at the fish stick building, thing. 10 out of 10. Crony Crossroads I think originally was a part of Sleepy Sound, they realised the location was too big so they made it its own location. I haven't really dropped here much, but it gives off a Solly Springs vibe. Also, for a couple of weeks, for some reason there was a glitch where there was a piece of the ice cream shop's roof on the road, which is a fun bit of trivia. Rocky Reels is a really good location, 
He took risky reels, which I think was a bit boring. I put it in a desert setting and I had things such as an arcade and other things. And I've landed here quite a lot throughout the season. 7 out of 10. This location I also like to refer to as Bot Heaven is alright. Gives off Chapter 2 Season 3 vibes slightly with the rustic stuff there. And it's really just a racetrack from Chapter 1 but a bit bigger. 5, five out of 10. Daily Butte also knows a location everyone would go before Cobra Cavern and Tilted were unveiled. It was certainly a really nice location like the rest of the club locations. I like how it's randomly just placed inside of a volcano for no apparent reason as well. 8 out of 10. And it's a shame next season it will probably be gone. The Joneses, also known as this chapter's Coral Castle, sounded like a really good idea having a society with Joneses, but execution to me at least. It looked really ugly and I never went there much. 5 out of 10. This was another quite popular location this season. I didn't go here that often, but I think it's quite cool. 6 out of 10. Now for the locations that were revealed later in the season. I never really landed Tilton much in Chapter 1 because I was bad at the game back then. Everyone went there, but Tilton in Chapter 3 is really cool. It's just sheltered but updated a bit. I also like how some of the buildings it's got has washed off paint of the logos and names of places in Neo Tilted, such as the Turtle in a Double Plump. And the funny thing, right as they uh, real Tilted, the week later they revealed Covert Cavern and not many people went Tilted, so I had a prime chance to go, and I did. And I quite like the location, and I rate it a 7 out of 10. I'm going to put this short and simple. This location, wow, just wow. Chapter 2 Season 2 is my favourite season of all time, and this is just a better grotto in every way. I hope it stays for the foreseeable future. 10 out of 10. Fortnite Battle Pass. I just this Battle Pass was alright. Definitely had better skins than some of the previous seasons, such as Gumbo, which I wore tons this season, Spider Man, LT John Llama, and the Foundation. But others are just forgettable. I see what they were trying to do with the skins, having them all from, be from different universes or something, having them re trapped inside the loop. The weapon pool in the meta was very spammy this season. You had the MK7 and the string SMG and the machine pistol that made the range of assault rifle completely useless. The shotguns were also very meh. There was also the auto shotgun that I used all the time and the striker which I think took too long between shots to shoot and the heavy what was slightly annoying. The items this season were very good. The new med items such as the med mist and guzzle juice were very handy. And later in the season, the clombos, which are very cute and I hope they stay, and their clomberries were very super handy. Very super handy, you know. There's also the tent, which I never really used because I just thought they were useless aside from if you found one and you're low on health. The ice boxes were cool as well. And one of the best things about this season has to be the Spider Man mythic. It was really easy to get the hang of it and it felt very fluent swinging around. Clubs and other events. Winterfest I'm probably going to save talking about for another video, but clubs, yeah, there weren't many this season compared to other seasons, but they were pretty cool. We had... one minute. Spider-Man in the Battle Pass, which, really good skin, and the other styles really rounded him off. Spider-Man from No Way Home alongside MJ. Uh, I like the Spider-Man black and gold style better than the normal one, the MJ. Nothing really much to talk about, it's just... Really, if he just took away that, he was... Uh, MJ from Spider Man, just look like a normal random person. Then we had, this is not in any order, I'm just looking at a list here. The Nathan Drake and Chloe Fraser stuff, people from Uncharted. I saw the movie, it was alright. Yeah. The skins look alright, but again, they just look like normal people, to be honest. And the, the map was alright, but I kept on getting Rangers and uh, Strikers, which was a bit annoying. But it was cool, welcome addition, you know. Then we had the Hawkeye stuff. They were gonna be good, but they got their faces completely long, and they look really weird. They also had Green Goblin. I really like this. They took the Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi Green Goblin design with the mechanical suit, and got the comic book design and scrambled them together, and made their own thing, and it looks pretty cool. And we had V from Arcane. i never seen Arcane or play League of Legends. I know the funny meme where people turn fat. Then we have Gears of War. Uh, I've never played the game before, but it's welcome addition to the gaming legends, I guess. We had the NBA stuff. Again, I'm not interested in basketball, so yeah, but it's cool, I guess. Then we had Book of Boba Fett stuff. I got Boba Fett, and then a couple a month, I think, later, Chris Sutton. I can't say his name properly, and Fennec Shannon, at least. I would have got the Wookiee 
I'm just going to call him Loki. Loki over Boba Fett, to be honest. And I find it funny how Chris Sutton, or Loki, was released first over, you know, the main Wookiee himself, Chewbacca. We also had the Marshmallow stuff. The Marshmallow Ninja looks way better than the other Marshmallow stuff. Marsha, she's just a hush reskin. Yeah, it's marshmallow head on her. Then we had Agent, not Agent Jones, we had the Cobra Kai stuff. I've never seen Cobra Kai before, but another welcome edition. We had the Bruno Mars stuff too. I have nothing really to input on that. They look alright. And that's the collabs. The Miles will review on them. Well, at the time of recording, we only have a day until the next season drops, apparently. And there has been literally nothing said about it apart from that Chapter 3 Season 1 is ending on the news tab. No teasers, no announcements, nothing but leaks we've had and known about from the start of this season. Next season will be I over 7 themed, sort of like Chapter 2 Season 2 I guess, and there will be some form of 7 workshop POI which was supposed to be in this season but was postponed to next season apparently. There has also been leaks of something called Catus Cave, Catus was the name of the Devourer in the files for this Chapter 1 Season 9 event. So this could potentially be a new POI, there's also talk about vehicles having turrets on them and the IO drills being drivable. And the only piece of Fortnite related news for the next season and seasons is the Fortnite X Marvel Reality War comic, which will be out in June and it will basically be Batman Fortnite but Marvel. From the comic panel shown, there's a flashback of the Devourer vs Mech, the Galactus event, there's also the member of the Seven believed to be Origin and the Seven leading a charge on the Covert Cavern and people inside of the drills. In terms of predictions, I think the Daily Bugle would get destroyed by an eruption and the volcano will turn into a normal volcano, or the Daily Bugle will be replaced by another POI, or maybe the Seven Workshop. I also think Covert Cavern will turn into Catus Cave or be destroyed, and the Sanctuary may be destroyed as well, or have barricades reinforcing it, same with Covert Cavern. The Vol at Mighty Monument might open, there might be more Seven and IO outposts spread across the map, and maybe through the season like Chapter 2, Season 2, some locations will be Seminified or Ioified, sort of like how they did in Chapter 2, Season 2. If you chose Shadow Style, then the location will turn Shadow. Or if you pick Ghost, the location will turn Ghost. So in conclusion, this season was very good and I rated it 8 out of 10. Hopefully next season will be good as well. We'll just have to wait and see.